Good evening and welcome to episode 11 of the Pat Homer podcast brought to you by Waters and Mathis CPAs. If you ain't filed your taxes yet, you're probably screwed. But <laughs> if you got a last second emergency and you're catching this on a Monday morning, uh, visit WMCPAs.com. Maybe you can find a phone number, but boys, it might be too late. Um, we're it actually record. Late. We're it recording. Ain't, it ain't too late. It ain't too late. Yeah, you, need an, you can <laughs> file an extension. You got you got till twelve a.m. tomorrow or eleven fifty nine p.m. Uh, we're actually recording this one on time this week. We've had a busy busy little schedule lately. Um, so last week uh, we said that we felt like we needed to win two games, and we were just hoping to get two. And we were really kind of thinking that the UNCW game maybe was going to be one of those. And if we got one out of three from Clemson. Uh, that that would be a win for us. And then I also remember last week we said we would trade a loss to UNCW to get two from Clemson. And, well, that's what we got. Uh, we, uh, I, thought went, we said tra- I thought we said trade a loss to get a – oh, yeah, you're right, because we, we, did, we did decide on two out of two – or two out of four. So I was thinking we said we'd trade a loss to get a sweep, but you're right. It was, it was still to get two, go two and two for the week. So we did go two and two for the week. Uh, lost a midweek game to UNCW. Uh, won the first two games uh, down at Clemson, and um, and then today got shut out in game three. Uh, but in a game that was competitive, it was a zero zero game to the seventh inning, and we shut Clemson out for nineteen straight innings, which is uh, pretty dang impressive. Um, and especially the way you know we we kind of. Uh, We've talked at uh, nauseum about some of our pitching struggles, so I, I thought our you know guys threw the ball really good this week. Um, Wesley, you were at the UNCW game. Um, I know we got jumped on early, and then that ended up being a, a game that we lost five to four. Anything there that that stood out, or uh, you kind of want to give us a rundown of that one since you were actually in the house down there in Wilmington? Yeah, it, it was a fun night. Uh, a Mac pulverized two balls. Um, but I mean, un- un- unfortunately from an offensive standpoint, uh, if it wasn't from a Mac or Pennington, there really wasn't a whole lot going on, um, in that game. Um, when Scott threw some really, really good innings for us. And of course, I don't want to take Cal's thunder away, but it seemed to be Derek Smith's coming out party, um, you know, in Wilmington. And, you know, even though we lost, I, I didn't think. You know, I didn't walk away from from Brooksfield. You know, necessarily uh, too disappointed. We we played okay. It was, you know, from an offensive standpoint, we left a lot to be desired. But from a from a midweek game, I thought we saw a lot of positives from our pitching staff. Yeah, just the long and short that night. Uh, yeah, five four was a close game. We got jumped on early. They put up uh, four in the first. Uh, Three frames, scored all five of their runs in the first five innings. Uh, Hollis Fanning uh, gave up three wins. When, when Scott gave up two, but in, in four and two thirds, uh, you know, actually really, really good innings. Uh, and then, as Wesley said, uh, six out of our eight hits in that ball game uh, came from Amac and 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 Pennington. Uh, Amac actually had had four hits and and two home runs in that one. Uh, and and Derek Smith, he he did. That was a coming out party for him. He came in and faced uh, six guys and, and struck out five. So gave him a little bit of confidence going to the weekend. Uh, I think we were all watching the Friday night game against Clemson, one that we won uh, 11 to 8. Uh, Clemson carried a 2 1 lead into the fourth, but then we scored four in the fourth, uh, four in the fifth. Uh, game we out hit Clemson 10 to 7. Um, a game when where, when Sam Highfield did show back up for us uh, in the rotation. You know, we went to Louisville last week and didn't have Sam Moore with. Still didn't see Witt this weekend, but uh, Sam started for us, uh, went three and a third, uh, kind of ran into some trouble and, you know, had a short night. Um, you know, gave up six earned runs and three and a third. And then we turned it over to Shane Van Dam and, uh, Adam, you want to talk about that out from Shane Van Dam a little bit? Four and a, four and two thirds. I mean, he just dominated. 
Yeah, four and third, ter- four and two thirds, um, eight strikeouts. Uh, obviously, came came in and got the win. Uh, we were all texting and watching. I think, you know, he, I think he, he he gave up four walks all total. Two of them were, um, I think, they're late. Uh, hit two guys also, but man, he was real, real dominant. I thought. Um, how many Clemson scored? Two on him, and then a couple of those that uh, that we gave up there in the bottom of the fourth were on. Were I guess were on high field, but uh, but after that, he just absolutely shut them down. I thought um, real impressive outing. I mean, we we've uh, obviously been um, you know uh, Wes was big on Van Dam last time we recorded, and and we when we talked about you know getting him the ball for extended periods and you know obviously the hate the you know hate to see the short outing unfortunately from Sam but uh but man it was nice to have an option like Van Dam to eat all those innings against a uh, a big team on a Friday night on the road and uh, hold on long enough that we could that we could score enough runs and and um and really put it away I thought it was Good that we added a couple late there. You know, we all kept saying we got to have more runs. We got to have more runs. Um, you know how? I, you know, talking about how much longer Van Dam can go. Did he get to? Did he get to ninety pitches? I can't remember his pitch count. I know he's in the eighties. Um, um, it's not in the box score, okay? but but I know I, yeah. I know he got at least into the eighties, which was I'm I'm assuming yeah. probably the the most pitches he's thrown in an outing in his uh, NC State career. Um, but yeah, you know, we were talking about how long, just how long can he go and, and, um, but, you know, obviously we added, added one of the top of the eighth and top of the ninth, which was awesome. Um, you know, kind of insurance runs that we felt like we were going to need and, you know, and obviously, you know, um, you know, we had, you know, several walks and hit by, hit by, hit batters that, that we put on the base path. So. You know, one thing, another thing in that game that really stood out to me was, you know, uh, it was good to see Serrano, um, you know, kind of come back around a little bit, you know, had been struggling for us as of late. Obviously, he's my guy, I follow him pretty tight, but uh, he was three for four, had four RBIs and drew a walk, uh, scored two times and really had some timely hits too. So um, that was that was good to see from him. Um, obviously, uh, a Mac, you know, a couple more hits, uh, man, guys just been absolutely huge for us. I'd say the same thing with Hogue. Hogue scored three times, was two for four. Um, guy that had been, you know, kind of on and off and, um, but it was good. I really, really liked the lineup too Friday night. Um, that was good to see us change things ar- around a little bit, even though, you know, Luke kind of uncharacteristic uncharacteristically struck out a couple of times um you know he had a he had a he had a real timely hit as well there and um i i did like him in that in that position leading off so is that where we're at i, I kind of feel like that's probably the consensus wesley uh i think we all like luke in the lead off would you guys agree I, I think adam says he does wesley yes absolutely yeah i think we've been kind of it's been one of the things we've been poking the bear for is, is breaking up all these lefties. And uh, we, we kind of had that left, right, left, right, uh, left, right look on, on Friday night. And um, I like that lineup. And then, and then Derek Smith, my guy again, he came in and shut the door um, in the ninth. And um, I tell you what, Van Dam and, and Smith, I know they're both from the right side. Um, which you remember when we had, uh, you know, Evan Justice and Villeman, they were both on the left side, but man, they both throw that you just wipe out. Like when the breaking ball's over the plate and, and then they just, you know, got 95 behind it. Man, when they're in the zone, they're just so tough to hit. And, uh, Van Damme, he struggles with it a little bit, you know, I guess more than Smith. Uh, I think the announcer said that probably some of Smith's early season troubles is he's in the zone almost too much. Uh, just doesn't walk anybody. Um, and you know, if you're facing aggressive teams and they're trying to jump on your early encounters, uh, that, you know, you can't get yourself in a little bit of trouble when you, when you throw too many strikes, but that was a huge win, just a absolutely huge win, 
to to get game one. I think probably if you look at every ACC series throughout the year, uh, a lot of time I, I would think more often than not, the team that wins game one wins the series. Um, but we were facing, you know, uh, 28-4 and four, uh, Clemson team going in. And, you know, there was certainly no guarantees. Uh, Clemson more than capable of uh, coming back and, and winning the series. And then we go into last night, or, you know, last night's game. And uh, Don Fritton rolls out as the starter last night. Um, and, Wesley, I'll let you talk about that one a little bit and, and, and rest my vocal cords here a little bit. But, man, Don, Don was really good. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've been – it's kind of kind of what we've been waiting on all year, and I think that was definitely good good for everybody to see, and and for for nobody more more so than Dom. <laughs> you know, if you, if you're looking to turn it around, and from a confidence standpoint, if you can go into Clemson, South Carolina, in front of I don't know what eight ten thousand people, whatever they had in that stadium, and and really shut down that offense for for uh, almost six innings, that's uh, that's a that's a great turnaround game um so i don't i don't think anybody's happier than dom right now coming back to raleigh tonight um getting ready for carolina next weekend yeah six strikeouts i thought the biggest thing was zero wild pitches zero hit batters one walk in five and two-thirds i mean when he's in the zone i mean gosh he's i mean he you know just absolutely just went out and dominated gave up three hits um I mean, just kind of the dom uh, that we were, were were hoping to get, you know, when the season started. And, you know, we, we've said before that if, you know, that if we leave Dom in the rotation, he turns around, we, we all love to be the ones to say we were wrong. Uh, you know, it might be a little too early to say that he's figured it out after just, you know, one really good start. But I, I think that uh, – I think everybody um, is uh, is hoping – uh, that that's the case. Um, so if we if we if we said starting uh, on uh, going into the weekend that Sam was going to give us less than four innings and Whitaker wasn't going to be available and we won the series at Clemson, what would you say? <laughs> no way. No, no, I would have said no way. Yeah, no chance. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> I mean, you figure if you say Sam's going to give you less than four, I'd have figured we lost like seventeen to seven or something. Like, you know, just yeah, got boat raced. Yeah, I mean it was I mean it was fun. I mean the 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 Friday night game just just getting our swagger back and played a little bit and finally scoring some runs, man, just felt good. I mean, I we've been yeah. struggling with that. I mean for a couple weeks now and you know to to pitch good enough uh against obviously a very good Clemson team and and to just you know boat race them at the plate felt good. You know, I mean, that was that was a fun game. Both games yeah. were fun. Uh, yeah. Friday and Saturday games. Yeah. How 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 about Van Dam? You know, twelve months ago, he's pitching in front of I don't know what ten people <laughs> in the freezing cold. In the freezing cold. Now, you know, fast forward to April. You know, April twelfth, and here he is shutting down Clemson in front of again. I don't know how many. It, it looked it looked capacity to me. Uh, on Friday and Saturday night, so for 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 him that has to be an incredible feeling. You know how much he's accomplished and where he how how far he has progressed over the last twelve months. Absolutely, uh, yeah. So in game two, after Don had a you know a great start, then we brought uh, Jacob Duden in. Um, he had three walks and one and a third. Uh, Wesley called Duden wild thing. Uh, he's one of those effectively wild guys. What did you say, Wesley, about if you get in the box in the first one? Yeah, I mean, I think I think for most players, and I, I think I texted you guys during, like, first pitch strike, please first pitch strike. But I think uh, Duden's first pitch was uh, chin music, you know, <laughs> you know, high, high and inside. And I think that's better. You know? <laughs> like, I think that was uh, actually, I think that's what you want with him uh, because he was able to, he was really able to, 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 to to go from there, so may, maybe that's what we want from Duden to get, put a little fear in the eyes of the batters. <laughs> he he has Run got. Back. Go ahead, Adam. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say he's got so much room to get 
so much better. I mean, he's only a freshman. Oh, yeah. And he's he's 97. He throws. 98 I mean, last night. He, yeah, oh, 97, 98. And he's throwing breaking balls that seem like they break a foot. And like Wesley said, like, if you're digging in and, like, you get 98 at the chin, and then if you can throw that breaking ball on, you know, on the outer half next pitch, like, how do you hit that? Like, you're sitting there, like, hoping that, like, he doesn't, like, hit you in the rib cage, and, <laughs> and then he just, you know, breaks one off on the other side. Like, I don't know how you hit that. Um, so, he's just got – he's so exciting just from the – how much he's he's not even close to to what I think you know he can be. I mean he's you look at him, he's got nineteen walks and eighteen innings, four forty two ERA. Uh he's struck out nineteen and eighteen innings as well. But he he's a really, really good piece uh to our team now. I mean very, very important piece for us out of the pen, uh with as limited as we've been out of the pen at times, but he can get so much better. And if he keeps getting better, you know, Wesley keeps saying that you know, the good part about throwing all these freshmen so early is they're getting innings under their belt. I mean, if he if he's a guy that's, you know, pounding the zone, I, and gosh, that guy's tough to hit. I think most of the hits he gives up are just because he gets behind and counts and then guys sit on something and, and, and run into it. I don't, I don't think that if he gets to where he's locating and throwing it where he wants to, man, he's going to be, he's going to be trouble. I remember how many batters it was in a row he started behind in the count on but i know at one point like five of nine that he had faced had gone to full count yeah five, and, yeah and to, your, and to your point you know a guy who's you know definitely you know has got our worst walk to innings ratio the guy's you know trying to throw strikes and 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 not walk on especially on something like a full count or you know once he gets three balls and obviously making it a little more predictable to hit. So, yeah, I think that's a good point. But, man, I mean, and you're talking about his 97, 98. He makes it look easy, too, um, you know, from the stretch. And, man, very smooth with it. So, you know, nothing nothing uh, forced about it. So, um, yeah, very exciting to see, um, hopefully see him progress. You know, we're. I think to to y'all's point, you know, the, the seeing these young arms and and getting this much work is hopefully going to pay off for us. So the end of that game, Derek Smith comes in again, and I'm I'm a little bit nervous because he <laughs> threw two innings on Tuesday night. He closed the game on Friday night. You know, like all of a sudden he's our shiny toy that we want to want to use, which you know I've been asking for it, so I was glad to see it. But anyway, we bring Derek Smith in. He comes in with, was it runners on first and second that he came in in the eighth and he struck out three guys in a row? Is that right? I think so. Yeah, sounds right. Uh, was that, or was it in the eighth that we had the tag out that um, Pennington reached in back and got the guy? You know, Butterworth pulled him off when Taylor hit the ball to short. Was that in the eighth? That, I felt like that that was a huge was, play in the game. Was that in the seventh or the eighth? Okay, maybe. I, I want to get a look because uh, I'm I'm interested now. <laughs> but yeah, yes, no, that was in the seventh. You're right because it says Taylor grounded out to short in the in the seventh, and so that was that was the. I was thinking that was Smith in then, but uh, that was uh, I guess Duden. Yeah, I guess it was. Yeah, that yeah, was so, a huge play there. So in the in and the eighth, I guess Dude, Dude came in the eighth and walked the first two guys, right? Uh, in the eighth, he gave up a single at the middle and then he walked. So he had runners first and okay. second. Yeah, Smith came in, strikeout swinging, strikeout swinging, and uh, then strikes out swinging. And the last strikeout, he hit him. Yeah, that he, was insane. He, <laughs> he throws a breaking ball and hits him. The guy swings through it. And, like, at first, everyone thought it was just a wild pitch, you know, to, that Cozart's unable to block on strike three. And we're like, oh, God, here we go again. We've done put one on uh, and, and given up a run because he had and thrown a run. A, and a run, and a run yeah, scored, yeah. A, a run scored. And then they go to the replay. I, I've never seen that where well, cause, I, cause I didn't early, know the rule. Early, it makes sense. In that, 
Yeah, earlier in that bat, one did get by. Yes. And so the the runners advanced from from second to third. I mean, from first to second to second, third. And uh, yeah, but I will say, I obviously I didn't know the rule either. Um, but Cozart clearly did. That's what I was yes. going to say. You know, he because he was immediately saying it hit him, it hit him, it hit him, and uh, you know he was walking back towards the dugout. So he definitely knew the rule. So yeah, we had two huge reviews there. Uh, bait, uh, to end both innings, to end the seventh and the eighth. Yeah, the 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 so the situation there was uh, Smith comes in, runners on first and second, strikes out the first two, throws a wild pitch, you got second and third with two outs, and Smith does just a nasty breaking pitch, hits the guy in the shin, uh, and the guy, I mean, guy full swings through it, and uh, so strike three, he takes off running the first, but it, he was hit, so it's a dead ball. Uh, strike three to end the inning, and then uh, Smith do a uh, a scoreless uh, ninth. But I mean, Derek Smith again, four strikeouts and two in and a two inning save uh, to clinch the series. Um, just a huge win. I mean, we were all on cloud nine last night uh, after after the, at the end of that one, knowing that we'd gone to Clemson and, and uh, taking care of business. You know, regardless of what happened today, which you know didn't go the way we wanted to. Um, before we talk about game three a little bit, and you guys, it's okay if you disagree with me. It's, it's, I get probably people that listen probably like when we disagree. But does it annoy the heck out of anyone else that like Clemson's like a like a middle school softball team? Like it's it's almost too much for me, man. Like they're like over there, like they got like choreographed oh, dances. God. Oh, they God. got like yeah, I, I'm yeah. like waiting for them to say. Uh, like sing some songs or something like it's a yeah. little too much for me. Yeah, I agree. I don't like it either. It, it, I mean, it, it it looked like you know, it looked like in all fairness, it looked like the Clips and softball team. You yeah. know, like seriously, I mean, that's the kind of the well, thing it, that if, uh, if, it, if that if that wasn't bad enough, the announcers were just oh, as gosh. bad. I mean, yeah. you you would you I, would think there would be. I mean, I, I get it. They're Clemson announcers, but it was just. It was just sickening listening to that. I ended up putting it on mute so I didn't have to hear that. And I get it, like, you know, on the, you know, the ESPN Plus coverages and stuff like that. And I know we have the same guys. Uh, our, our guy, Simpson, is on the, uh, when they had the network, ACC network games as well. Uh, I think, uh, at least he has been a couple of times, but. But that was bad. I mean, the the coverage was just bad. I remember, and I, I kind of felt like it was the same way in the Louisville game. You know, like I just don't get that sense. And maybe it's because I'm a Pat Homer. Uh, I don't get that sense listening to our broadcast. But man, the, the I felt the same way during the Louisville coverage, honestly. But and, and I'm not like the president of the No Fun Club. I'm not like I, you know, yeah. I played baseball a long time. <laughs> I think that there's a lot of people that that. They, they they want to take too much of the fun out of baseball. Baseball is a fun game to play. And, you know, I, I don't get offended when guys hit one to the moon and flip the bat. Yeah. That doesn't bother me. I don't get mad when they hit a home run and go put their hockey helmet on like our team does or whatever it is or, you know, slam dunk in the batter circle, whatever. I, none of that bothers me. Well, But, well, but man, the, 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 the choreographed yeah. dancing, that was a little much. I don't, I don't want to see so any much. grown man doing anything choreographed, I can tell you that. <laughs> well, what was so weird about it too is like at least on the the camera angle, it was it was like there was two rows of them. It wasn't like they were all on the you know on the on the dugout fence. It was like they were like staggered behind one another. Yeah, it was terrible. I I don't know. Like I said, you know, in girls softball games, you get that, and it's awesome, right? Like it's a part of the game, a part of the sport, but. You're just not used to seeing that for, in a baseball game. And, uh, yeah, it, it was a little bit much for me as well. I, I was just thinking about, you know, I played high school baseball for – and the other thing was they were getting their – they were getting their butts whooped. I mean, they were they were losing both times that, you know, they were doing this at the time. They hadn't won a game in the series. And then they went 19 in and straight without scoring a run. And I was just thinking about my high school baseball coach. Uh, battle. I played for – for Battle Holly, probably some of the folks listening, if they don't know Battle, they know his his father, uh, Jack Holly, who's the the winningest football 
coach in, in North Carolina history, just, you know, old school, uh, hard nosed, uh, family. I mean, just a great athletic family, really good people too. But I, I was just thinking, man, if we were in high school and we just lost last night and now we're like losing four to nothing tonight and we were doing choreographed dancing in the dugout, like, I would not want to go to practice the next day, but I, mean, I guess that's part of the culture. I don't know. Maybe it helps with recruiting, but yeah, it's not, that's not my thing. Not, and I'm not the president of no fun club. I'm saying that again, but that, too much for me. If you like it, that's, I'm a, that's okay too. I um, it. So today I uh, came back in, uh, in there, there were some positives. I don't want to talk a whole lot about the game today because we lost and uh, we lost seven to nothing. We get shut out today. Uh, but I do want to talk about a, a couple of the positives from the day. One, uh, Cooper Consiglia threw the ball really good today. Um, threw six innings, gave up two earned. Uh, he actually left a scoreless game, and then we were unable to kind of get out of a jam. Uh, and they scored five in the seventh, two in the eighth. Um, but he did a really good job today scattering some hits because we gave up 11 hits today. Um, we saw Heath Andrews, Winscott, Schaffner, Consiglio in a game that was staffed. And, um, you know, I, I think – and was that a freshman Clemson through today? Yes. Whew. Gosh, he's good. He's really good. What? How do you say his name? Kanak? Kanak. Anyway, the dude throws 94 and his changeup is his best pitch. So, uh, man, I mean, we just got – they just, they just kind of – it was one of those baseball games today. We had two hits, uh, struck out ten times. Um, just could never get it going. Um, but, uh, still huge series win. I think we jumped in the RPI up to where, where do we say we were at Wesley? I know me and you were talking before we came on. I think it was 27, but I don't know if that's been updated for today, but 27 when I look. 27 in the RPI, give you a little interest in RPI statistic. Uh, and at, I get, let's see, after today, I guess that makes us five and three versus the top 25. But we are 11 and three versus the RPI top 50. And we're two and nine versus 51 through 100. So it's hard not to look back at the, you know, Louisville series and the Georgia Tech series where you feel like you should have at least got something. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, very, very encouraging to see us not, not only win a series against the number one RPI team in the country. Uh, and, and by the way, Clemson was have, is and, and and still is having such a good year that even after losing to us twice in back to back nights at home, they were still number one in the country uh, in RPI. So I mean, that was a really really good ball club uh, that we beat in Clemson, South Carolina this weekend, um, and you know got another opportunity uh, this week against the number six RPI, uh, North Carolina Tar Heels. But before we talk about that, i got a few questions I want to mix in. We're going to do a little housekeeping here, okay? Uh, before we transition to talking about our neighbors uh, down the road. Do you have anything I wanted to add from this series before we do that? I don't think, I think so. We play, uh, the only thing I was going to say is, that, you know, I know we played pretty clean defense today. You know, we we – we did have the three errors on on Friday night and one yesterday. Obviously, Clemson ended up, I think, with seven errors to our four. But uh, I did look earlier. It had dropped our fielding percentage for the year down to 969. Uh, our opponents are fielding 978 or 974, excuse me. So, um. Not, not that any of them were real concerning, and and and, and uh, I would say both uh, Butterworth and Pennington made some really nice plays. Um, but uh, Pennington and and Amac and Butterworth also, but all made some really nice plays to that possibly could have, you know, that would have been hits uh, otherwise this weekend. So, not to really harp on it, but it was just, uh, you know, I. Would like to see us continue to clean it up on D a little bit. Yeah, I think one of my complaints about our defense is, has been that we don't take away enough hits. We actually did that a few times this weekend. We did. We yeah. took away some hits and, and got some guys off the pass with some 
some pretty timely double plays. Uh, but uh, yeah, we 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 definitely could be a little better defensively. I'd agree with that. Um, yeah. All right. So to my little housekeeping questions, I got three. Uh, by the way, if you're not following us on Instagram yet, we got a hundred <laughs> followers. Uh, so Damn. we would really appreciate if you would follow us on Pack Homer at Pack Homer Pod on Instagram and X. Um, that is where if we make a a bold prediction that comes true, that we repost it like six times. So you can I don't know how smart we are. If we make any predictions that do not come true, you will not see us uh, retweet. <laughs> Or um, that content does not get reposted. That's right. That's right. That that content goes to the graveyard and never um, come out again. But yeah, please follow us on X and Instagram. Um, that's that's all we're working for at this point. Um, but anyway, got a few questions. Uh, and please too, also if you got any questions for us, uh, hit us up. Uh, you can DM us, and and we love to talk about it on the show. Uh, sometimes it's a little easier to answer questions from you guys than to sit here. <laughs> Uh, try to, I guess, create content if that's the word. So one of the questions I got this week was, uh, basically, we were celebrating last week, if you tuned in, that we have done uh, 10 episodes now. And Adam, what percentage of podcasts did you say made it to 10 episodes? Less than two. It's like one point something. Yeah, it was less than, less than 2% make it to 10. So we this is our 11th episode now. Uh, and the question was, what is the hardest part about doing the podcast every week. Who wants to start? <laughs> I, I I think it's just uh, we all obviously got busy schedules. Um, you know, trying to just trying to find the time. You know, we have to keep Wesley up past his bedtime, uh, just so I can have time with my girls when when they're going to bed at, on on Sunday night. So. I just say the hardest part is finding the time. I think uh, when we get on here, it's easy to talk, um, and it's a lot of fun. I, I it's <laughs> it's uh it's one of my highlights of the week. I enjoy getting on here and sharing this time with you guys. It means a lot to me, so uh, it's it's fun. But uh, I I just say mm-hmm. making the time, finding the time, you know, to sit down. <laughs> we obviously. If you've been listening to us and you can't tell, we obviously don't think a whole lot about what we're going to say before we get on here. So <laughs> that part's that part's not hard, but uh, I think just finding the time, I would say, Cal. Wesley, is it is is it for you, Wesley? Like picking a new hat to wear every week because you got a different one. Yeah, every, every week. But God, that one tonight is fresh. That was so fresh. If that you're one just, is so fresh. <laughs> if you're just listening tonight, maybe maybe follow, maybe watch on YouTube because Wesley has a sick ad. I'm not even going to tell you what it is. Hey, I'm going to see how many if we can get some clicks on the that, YouTubes. Is that a hey, that's a new era hat? And yeah, nobody loves Sundrop more than I do. <laughs> hey, but at you 36 like years it? old, 36 years old is turned into dot Sundrop though. <laughs> <laughs> You might like Not. It. you might like you might like it, but you ain't drink as many as your man Calhoun has. I know my man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I but I I mean I agree with with Adam. I mean it's it's a we're I guess we're probably pretty unique from a standpoint of, I mean all three of us are. It feels like we're on a bird every other every week, you know. So we're traveling all over the country, and we're or all three of us are trying to do our part and keeping the country fed. You know, so, you know, it is tough on a, on a Sunday night. And my wife, uh, as good as a woman as she is, she definitely does not understand my love with, uh, NC State University. So, <laughs> so sometimes on Sunday night, she's like, wow, you got to go record a podcast after you watched, you know, you went to the final four on, uh, all weekend and now you got home and you got to go. Uh, to your building and record a podcast for an hour and a half. So, you know, at times it's not, it's not easy, but, but she accepts it. And, uh, you know, I think that's just, you know, we recorded 10, 10 in a row and I, I have no doubts we'll be at 20 and then 30. So that's where we're at. <laughs> yeah. I'd piggyback on what, what you guys said about our, you know, all three of us just having crazy travel schedules. When I started the career I'm in now, someone told me that the the D in diamond uh, stands for divorce. Um, <laughs> and I think I've been a diamond at uh, Hilton for like, I don't, I don't remember the last time I wasn't. And uh, we 
I think all three probably have more airline miles, honestly, than we won't. I know that it sounds uh, crazy, but the way you earn them isn't always fun. So uh, we're all three on the road a lot. Um, the other thing I would say that, you know, on a different note is uh, one of the things that I didn't anticipate uh, when when we started doing this was that, like, we're fans of these guys. Like, we, we like all the players. Like, when, you know, I go to the ballpark, you know, we walk up to these guys after the game and my kids are getting autographs and, uh, you know, wanting to meet the players or, you know, we co coach agent has been around Raleigh so long that, you know, we might run into him. Well, we're not journalists, but like we have an audience. And so we kind of have to talk about the bad too. And that kind of sucks sometimes. It's like, gosh, like what happens like when someone like, you know, we kind of almost feel like we know, uh, because we probably met them and we got to get on here and be like, man, they suck this week. Like that's <laughs> the part that I didn't really think about when we started doing this. It's like, you know, like <laughs> to, to say the hard things. And like, I kind of realized after we got past like Townsend where we weren't just going to 10 run rule everybody. Um, I guess that, you know, our platform, if we're trying to, uh, give our listeners good content is that we have to, we have to say the truth or, or what, whatever we, our opinion of the truth is. Um, so that part to me, um, is, is kind of something that was, I really didn't think about a whole lot before we started doing it. Maybe we've done a whole lot of it now before we started the podcast. If we were to ever publish like the pack Homer text threads, we wouldn't even be allowed at Duke field just being <laughs> completely transparent and honest. <laughs> But like now, like, even though, you know, it might only be a hundred, 200 listeners a week, whatever it is in a week. Um, I think we've got like over 2000 plays now, like anything we we say is like out there for the world. So, um, you know, and, and we have, we have players, parents who follow us. We have a lot of players who follow us. Um, so that was kind of the part. Maybe I didn't, uh, I didn't realize we were kind of getting into, um, I, I agree with that when we when we started um because again we're we're fans of the program like we these guys are our guys if you if you want to wear the red and white you're special to us because because the red and white is, is special to us yeah i mean not not only from a from an emotional standpoint but we like give a little money too so <laughs> yeah yeah we have a vested interest we have a vested interest we're stakeholders <laughs> stakeholders there you go all right uh the next question is i don't know if this is supposed to be like accusatory or what but it's fine you can ask whatever you want uh the, the next question i got is uh you guys have talked a lot about how good a lineup we have uh why can't we hit right now <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to tackle that one first? Oh. See, now we got to talk about the thing I said I don't want to talk about. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, we knew that the averages and the, you know, on base percentages and run scored was going to go down when we hit, you know, a lot more stiffer competition, which. You know, we're right in the middle of. I, I think we <laughs> we didn't consider the stiff competition starting the in Atlanta. We we kind of figured it would be coming the next week when the boys from Durham rolled into town. But um, um, but yeah, I mean, we're just facing. You know, you you mentioned Towson earlier. You know, Towson, VCU, Hawaii. Those guys are uh, queens. They're off the they're off the schedule and uh, and we're facing you know I, I forgot the number that we said but you know it was like six of the top you know 15 rpi teams in the country so the pitching has certainly changed um you know obviously we're over halfway through the season a lot of these guys now have started 30 33 games i guess it is and um you know i think you know you know it's it's you know, a lot going on, you know, they're guys are busy with school, you know, especially for some of these freshman guys, you know, you're adjusting to high school life and, and not, um, you know, a college course workload plus, 
you know, these midweek games, late games, and, you know, long weekends, and travel schedules, and all that sort of stuff. So, um, but as far as hitting specifically, I think, you know, you look at the experience that, that, uh, and the importance of, uh, the transfers that we brought in, you know, AMAC and Pennington, and man, they have been the heart and soul of our offense and, and continue to. Um, and I do think, you know, we talked about it before, you know, or earlier on, like, you know, hitting is contagious. And, and when some other guys are struggling, you know, like, you know, I mean, it's no secret, like, you know, you know, I, once you get past AMAC and Pennington in the lineup, you know, we've, we've, cooled off significantly i think you know we've struggled to find the right um you know we've switched around the lead off a little bit you know i think dh is something that we're still trying to find you know sosa you know since coming back is has struggled and i don't know i mean we're just facing better competition you know we i still believe in our lineup i still believe in pennington amac cozart uh, Hogue has looked like he can be real special. I think Serrano is coming around. Hopefully, you know, Friday night's uh, performance will get, you know, uh, in, in the Clemson series will get him, you know, on the right track. So, yeah, I think it's just competition that we're facing now is the reality of it. And that's, that's not going to get any less coming up. So, uh, I like the little flurry that we had in Clemson there on, on Friday and hoping we can, uh, start putting that together again ASAP this week. We got a tough week coming up too. I'll go second because Wesley looks deep in thought. So I'm gonna let him put that thought together. <laughs> um <laughs> you know I think yeah what uh, Adam hit the nail on the head about the competition being better. I think you know the other part of it uh that I am optimistic about it like if you look like we still don't strike out. Like when I say we don't strike out, we don't strike out at near the rate. Um, of our of our opponents. So if you look, or maybe not our, our opponents necessarily, but as the rest of the ACC, like if you look, you know, uh, Boston College and Duke have both struck out over 300 times. Um, the Florida State is 13 out of 14 in the ACC in strikeouts. They've struck out 239 times. We still have not struck out 200 times. We've struck out 199 times. So we're putting the ball in play a lot. Um, and I think that, uh, eventually like some of those, some of those good swings are going to fall. Um, but then at the same time too, I think that, you know, maybe we are, uh, maybe our pitch selection, I mean, maybe we're not always hitting good pitches, uh, pitches that we can handle pitches that we can drive. Uh, and then I think too, uh, that, uh, if you look at, you know, where we're at, uh, right now as a, as a team, you know, we, we felt like, um, you know, Eli Serrano was a guy that was, you know, if you had asked me before the year, I'd have said he's, he's going to hit over 300 for us. If, if you asked me, you know, about Jacob Cozart, I'd have said he's going to hit in the mid threes. Um, so I think that those two guys are guys that we know can, um, and Eli, you know, seemed to maybe be coming out of it this weekend. Uh, I think that's something that we're we're all hoping for, but um, you know, I, I I don't have a great answer for you. I mean, but just you know, need to see some balls get through the infield and 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 need to uh, you know barrel up some pitch. You know, we just got to do it. I mean, hitting's one of those things that kind of is a can be a little bit of a roller coaster up and down. Uh, for us, I still think this is a talented lineup. So for us, I think is pretty easy to say that we haven't had a, a weekend in quite a while where we just went out and barreled everything up. Uh, so, so maybe we, we, we get hot at the right time, but I, I still do believe in the talent that we, we have in the lineup, but, uh, you know, it doesn't really, doesn't really matter if it doesn't produce. So hoping to see some of that. Wes. Yeah. I got a lot going on up there thinking about this. <laughs> I mean, I, th I think you, you know, we talked earlier about, you know, Eli, he played a lot better this weekend, but I mean, we definitely, from a standpoint of, 
from a batting average, we think he's going to improve, and then we want we want Cozart to hit better. Um, you know, I think about uh, you know back to lead off. I really like Luke at lead off. You know, from an average standpoint, I think Butterworth's going to hit better as we get you know further into conference play. With uh, I think I think Sosa's the most intriguing part of the lineup now. Um, I don't know if it's O for the last 30, O for the last 31. I'm not, I'm not sure. You know, when we, when we went to the baseball celebration, we watched the team take BP, you know, Sosa looks different. You know, he's going to be a heck of a ball player. I mean, he, he, for, for his age, he's, He's big, he's strong, he's athletic, he's fast, he's going to be a heck of a ball player. Um, but you have to wonder, you know, from a standpoint of, you know, if you look back to last year when we lost Peebles, you know, maybe this is, you know, keeping him in the lineup is something that's just the the nature of the beast now that you have to keep giving these guys that are, you know, athletically superior, you have to keep giving them chances because you don't, you want them to be there next year. Um and for me personally, you know, you know, I don't know. You know, I, I had mono when I was at NC State. I thought I was going to die. You know, it, it took it took me weeks to recover from that. And, you know, and, and anybody who hasn't experienced mono, it is it is tough. I mean, it, it, it drains you. It take it could take a couple months just to feel like your normal self. So. You know, and I think that's that's something that he'll work through. But it it's not it's not a normal illness where you just bounce back. <laughs> no, I can, it it's rough. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm not laughing about. That. I know why you're laughing because I. <laughs> I, t- I told y'all the story about how I got mono. <laughs> no, no. Oh no! You said you made. We talking about wits. We're talking about where wits been. been. Yeah. Oh yeah, we you know. He, He's too he's too old to get mono. <laughs> I don't know I don't know what Wit's got. I'm I'm more worried about Wit than I am about Sosa. <laughs> I don't know what he's got. <laughs> Wit's too old to get mono. That was awesome. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think I think Sosa would be okay. But it is. I mean, he just he just need to see one get through. The, he just need to see a base hit. You know, that's it. You see, he just need to see the bat hit the ball. Yeah, and I got one other little thing I have for the last before I ask the last question is, I do think, gosh, man, we've seen a lot of good left-handers, and we're a very left-handed lineup. And I mean, you look at the dominant arms in the conference. You know, uh, it seems like everybody that we faced has had at least one good lefty. Uh, and yeah, uh, I mean, not just Jonathan Santucci, but some other guys too. So uh, yeah, hoping we get it turned around. The the last question kind of kind of parlays off of uh, off of your comment about uh, you know Sosa and, and Peebles. Uh, the question is, it, and I don't think we can answer this question, so we're just gonna we're gonna give our best guess. It says that you guys talk a lot about nil money. Uh, do you have any idea of how much nil money it takes in baseball to be competitive? I I don't know. That I, I don't know, I can put a dollar figure on it. I mean, what do you guys think? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there, I think there's just so much misinformation out there. I mean, about you know the guys that are you know paying for play per se. Um, obviously, we're really not in that position. I don't think. I think you know part of Coach A. Vince's goal, obviously, he mentioned was to, you know, get all the guys on scholarship and uh, have their, you know, their tuition and the room and board paid for, basically. But, uh, you know, I think it's a good question. But at the same time, I don't know that, I mean, I, I think even to a lesser extent than, like, basketball, you look at, like, the NL, NIL deals to get these, um, you know, one and done type kids to come to school. And then you look at the success the last few years that these more experienced 
teams have had, you know, even, I mean, look at our team, look at the NC state basketball team this year, you know, I mean, all the starters were transfer kids, you know, not huge NIL deals. Um, we're, you know, but, you know, we talk about the, you know, the growth from, you know, high school to, to being a freshman in college and, and what that takes. And, and then, you know, these guys, these, you know, these older guys have been around a long time, <laughs> you know, not to say they got to be as old as wit, but, uh, you know, AMAC and, and Pennington and, and what those guys mean to a team, you know, just from a leadership perspective. And, you know, obviously they, they, they've stepped up and been the most, um, uh, solid part of our offense so i don't think it takes a lot of nl money i think you know you look at somebody like lsu and how much money that they have in last year's team and that's different you know but i don't know i, I still want to believe in the um that you know experience beats having a bunch of just young studs you know kind of like is the case in basketball wesley yeah i mean i you know, you, you're going to have your uh, Arkansas, Tennessee, LSU, uh, you know, your top top four or five that's going to be hard Maybe. to compete with. But yeah. when it gets to the second tier, I think we could definitely compete in that. And, you know, I, I noticed a lot of Clemson's lineup, uh, pitchers coming in, uh, were, were transfers in from smaller South Carolina colleges. Um, you know, during our series. And I think, you know, as I've, I've told you guys about, there's a lot of talent in North Carolina that, that I have no idea. I don't even know the process for coach Avent and his staff for how you evaluate these transfers coming in. I don't, I don't know if they contact you, you contact them. I have no idea. But I do know that we do not have to go very far to find some extremely high caliber players. And, you know, you know what Chris Vernakis is doing. And I'm sure if you saw if we could see what our budget has grown from from last year, to this year, you know, I think we have a lot to offer, especially coming out of this season for playing time. You know, not much different than our basketball team. We have a lot to offer and, you know, hopefully our fan base can get behind, you know, not just football and not just basketball. And you should give a little bit of money to basketball, uh, <laughs> but you should give a great, you should give some money to baseball too. But, you know, I, I think we can, we can be in that second tier when it comes to a baseball NIL. And I mean, baseball is such a finicky game and you can look at, you know, we, I think we talked last week about Cannon Peebles. I think he's, you know, performing pretty poorly. And when you get out of your comfort zone, you know, if, if you're in a groove and, you know, you got a good group of guys around you and you say, hey, I'm going to take this money and I'm going to go to a whole nother state, a whole nother program, you know, that that could be detrimental to 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 your performance. And, you know, you know, ho hopefully for us, when we have good players, because Coach Avent has proven that he has the ability to recruit, you know, elite you know, elite high school players that we can keep them around. And, of course, we lost – the guy that's up in LSU and then we lost Peebles last year. So as a fan base, we really don't want to lose high caliber players. And I think that's not a big ask for, for, for us to, to keep, you know, hold on to these guys. Yeah. I think that, I, yeah, I, th I think, you know, like, like Wesley was saying, I mean, well, what, I mean, we lost to UFC Greensboro and, uh, and uh uncw in the midweek this year and and we're playing campbell who we'll talk about here in just a bit that you know another mid-major that <laughs> you feel like they got good enough players on their roster to beat you like they obviously are able there, there's talent at those levels i think that competitive is uh a relative term i mean nc state's very competitive uh, i mean we've been to omaha uh recently uh so we're uh, you know one of the you know what i'd say one of the premier premier programs in the country and, and what I think right now is probably the best conference in the country. Um, and, you know, we're, we're, we're fighting to, to win a conference championship year in and year out, it seems like. So I think that's a relative term. Uh, I did walk into the office this week and some folks were 
like shocked that Calipari had left Kentucky and went to Arkansas. And they're like, why would you go to Arkansas? Well, like, I don't know if you guys that are listening know, but Arkansas has Walmart money, Tyson money. And then they got this guy named Jerry Jones that owns the Dallas Cowboy money. Um, JB, JB Hunt, too. JB Hunt, yeah. Huge. So if they want to pay guys, we, I'm sorry for all our listeners. We're not going to, we're not going to outspend Arkansas if they want to spend it. So, I mean, that's just not, no chance, not realistic. I, I don't know that you take, I mean, you're talking about, you're talking about some heavy, heavy hitters. You go look at the Forbes 400 or whatever it is. It's like half the top 100. It feels like it's Walton's when you read the list. And that's just a sliver of their huge donor base. So, um, yeah, I think that it's more about being, uh, strategic in who you go out and target uh, in the portals. Uh, I think that I I hate it for high school kids, but it's really hard to me to not give a longer look at the guy who's dominated at a mid major. Or I mean, you look at Shane Van Dam, a guy come from a Division three school who has you know incredible measurables. I, I don't think it's easy to go to. And there's some schools like Boston College does a really good job of that. They go and get all these D3 guys. I don't know how you go scout guys. You can't scout them stat-wise alone at that level, right? Like, you got to be looking more, you know, at, at measurables. You know, you throw 95 and you're six foot five, and you throw a, you know, some crazy breaking stuff, maybe that plays in the ACC. But you can't just go look at stats when you're, you know, looking at Division two and three guys. It's a little bit tougher. But, uh, you know, these mid-major guys, they, they have a lot of – uh, a lot of games against, you know, the SEC, ACC, Big 12 teams during the midweek. You can you can learn a lot uh, about how how guys can compete uh, against that level. So I think you got to be strategic with your money. Um, and, but I do think, you know, I don't want anyone listening to think that it's just, you know, $100,000 a year is what gets you the talent. It's going to take a lot more than that. Uh, we, we talked about it before that you got, you know, 20 plus guys who aren't on the roster and aren't even getting a, any money. Uh, and you're trying to compete against schools that are, you know, full, fully funded as far as tuition and room and board from an NIL perspective. So uh, for us to, to do that, it's going to take a lot more than, you know, 100,000. I, I don't know what the number is. I, I don't I know the NC State is not paying like anybody six or seven hundred thousand dollars. But there are schools that, you know, I've heard of have paid those, you know, huge six figure numbers, uh, even even in college baseball. So. I, I don't know. Hard to put an exact number on it, but uh, definitely still needs to be something uh, at the front of, of front of all our fans' minds. If you're fans of college athletics, that's just where we are now, and um, you know you need to keep giving when we can, and and uh, you know when it makes sense for you financially. Um, all right, moving on this week, uh, real quick. I'm not going to even dig into much of the stats. Got Cam in the midweek. Played him at the Doak. Um, the 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 guy there, I think his name's Lawson Harrell, has hit 14 home runs. Uh, Campbell is, you know, I think all of us on the pod have talked about how much we respect him as a as a, a mid major program. Um, I think anyone who went to the South Carolina regional last year, they they were well, they they beat they eliminated us, but I mean. They're doing a phenomenal job there with the talent that they bring in. Um, and I think that for them, especially to beat us, uh, and they're 30 minutes away in our backyard, uh, they're going to be ready to play Tuesday night. Um, I also, guys, and you can chime in here, but I think it's a midweek game. We kind of need to win a, a midweek game against a quality opponent. Are you guys kind of feeling a little bit of that? I mean, you know, that win total at the end of the year, you got to win some of the midweeks for it to add up a little bit. You kind of count on winning some of those. Um, I think it's one. We're going to have great weather. Hope that we pack the dough. Um, but they're not going to be a pushover, I can promise you. I mean, they those guys get after it, and they, they play the game. They play the game hard. Wesley's, yeah. a, Wesley's a big meat wagon fan. I'm a big, big meat wagon fan. I mean, I remember watching the game last year at South Carolina and Columbia. They're huge. I don't know what they're doing in Bowie's Creek. I don't know if there's any correlation to meal days going on there in Benson. But those guys are huge. I mean, I, I really don't know, understand 
but they they are they're good um from an ego standpoint again we got beat beaten by uncg 18 to 1 east carolina it wasn't competitive uncw beat us so we got we need we we sit here and we talk about how good north carolina baseball is we from an ego standpoint now will this was will, will this affect us when it comes to you know regional super regional or just regional i guess uh selection maybe maybe not but you do want to win some of these in-state games there's no doubt about that and i, and I mentioned lost of hero do you guys know what happened to to i think is his last name pronounced nip grant he he's actually hit he hit 15 home runs in 22 games and i don't now, know how now that's now, now. I, I don't know how i miss this he's only played 22 games now and he didn't play this weekend hmm. um but you know, Harrell has hit 14 home is, runs. In this is, he first, is he first baseman catcher? Or what? I think he catches, doesn't he? And he, catches, and he I think he's catcher. Closes games. But uh, he hit 20, he hit 15 home runs and only 22 starts and has a 159 ERA uh, in, in five wow. and two thirds. But he did not play this weekend. Uh, and it's hitting 455 in only 22 games. So maybe he got hurt a little while back. I missed that. But, uh, I know that you know if you follow D one baseball, he was he was like all over the front page there uh, for a couple. I don't of weeks. know. I don't. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if the NCAA is just not showing up at Bowie's Creek or what, but they got some big boys. He hasn't played since uh, March twenty third against Delaware, so not sure what's going on with him. But and, and I don't know if he's out for the season or. Like I said, he pro- uh, probably probably probably, probably back, tore probably, probably tore back, probably back Tuesday night. Yeah, yeah. He, pro- he probably tore pec muscle bits in three eighty. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so big big we all agree big big midweek wet matchup with Campbell. I mean, I you know I think we should beat those guys and uh, but they definitely have a program I respect. So expect them to give us everything they got Tuesday night. Um, and then this series is a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series. Why? Why? The twenty-eight and seven uh, Tar Heels are coming to the Doak. And if you look at the ACC Thursday night, Thursday night it's on the network. If you look at the ACC baseball standings, uh, Coastal now in the Coastal Division, Carolina leads that division at fourteen and four. Uh, and then you look over on our side, Clemson leads the Atlantic at eleven and four, right behind them, Florida State at ten and five, and the Pack's ten and eight, with Wake Forest right behind us at nine and nine. I mean, both sides are really good. I mean, Carolina's fourteen and four, Virginia's eleven and seven, uh, Duke's eleven and seven. So UNC's got a really good baseball team. Uh, they're co- co- oh man, I gotta take a swallow or something. I got the hiccups here, but. <laughs> They're coming in. What'd you say? Adam? I was gonna give you. I was gonna give you a breather. Yeah, go ahead, please I do. Was, I was just gonna say that last week we talked about uh, what would make us feel good. Um, you know, I think we kind of all said two and two. Um, this week, I think what would make me feel good is is three and one. I I, I want to beat Campbell, and I really want to win the series against UNC. I think it's. Um, we got what nine conference games left. Um, no, I'm sorry, we'll have 12, 12 games. conference games left that we we really feel like we strongly feel like we need to win five of those 12 um, to get to 500 in the conference. I mean, obviously, huge getting that um, series win gets the number one RPI team, but uh, this this past weekend in Clemson. But um, I really want to beat the Heels, so I'd say. Uh, to follow up on what we did last week, we were successful at two and saying two and two last week. So I want to stretch it to three and one this week. Yeah, this is one, guys. If you know, UNC only they, they've lost four conference games, they've all been on the road. They're four and five on the road, uh, in conference play. But it's a series that if we win, even at we're 20 and 13 overall now, if we win this series. We're like back in the host discussion. It sounds crazy to say, but at twelve and eight, if you have a series win over Clemson, Duke, and UNC, 
Now we're not, I don't think we're a host yet, but you still got it all in front of you because you got Florida state wake and Virginia who are all also, you know, RPI top 25 teams. If you win this series, you really kind of control your destiny down the stretch on whether or not you're going to be playing a regional in Raleigh or, you know, heaven forbid you get swept if you're fighting to make a regional still. Um, but a lot in front of us this weekend. And I know, gosh, we, we all hate Carolina. So Did they sweep, they sweep us last year, right? Is that right? I think you're right. No. I think um, you're right. Man, no damn way. No damn way they sweep us this year. This year. <laughs> so a little bit about that Carolina team. Uh, they've hit 63 home runs. They got a 418 ERA. Not quite as good as what, what Clemson had. Um, they're aggressive on the base paths. I think everybody probably remembers, you know, Vance Honeycutt. He's still there. He's a junior now. Um, but he swiped 20 bags. They've stolen 60 bases as a team, 60 in 64 attempts. That's pretty aggressive base running. And they're obviously, uh, pretty good at it. Uh, they do tend to strike out a lot. I've always thought that's the weakness in Honeycutt's game is he just seems to to strike out in large numbers. He struck out 49 times already in 35 games. I mean, that's a huge number. He struck out a quarter wow. to our, our team. Uh, so he strikes out a lot. I think it's going to be really important. You can't walk that guy. Like, no. just throw it over to play. I mean, he swings through enough that, I, I, I mean, if he hits a double, then he can only steal third. So... <laughs> I guess he can still home too, but like that, you know, a guy you just can't put that guy on uh, via the free pass. You, you know, you're gonna have to throw it over the plate to him. But you know, they got they got some pieces in that lineup. Um, so you, you you think there's a piece that maybe you know maybe Wit, and of course I we have no inside information. Maybe Wit was potentially able to go this weekend, but we say we're gonna hold him off so he's healthy 100 percent against uh, Chapel Hill. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know either. I mean, I, I think it. Thought, I, think, so. I mean, but maybe after you win the first two against Clemson and you've got the series yeah. insecure, maybe. Yeah, I would think that would be the only scenario. I think that we all want to see him back in a hurry. Um, yeah, absolutely. It just makes us a whole different team if you if you get, especially if we can go out and, and Dom gets you five or five and two thirds like he did last night, and then. And, you know, you get five or six from Witt, and you get five or six from Sam. Then, you know, you got some pieces on the back end. With I I'd think, say if we get if we get to where we're getting, if we get um, if we could get five plus innings out of all three starters, you know, this coming weekend, um, I would feel good about winning that series. I think, you know, what we've seen in the in the pen. As of late, has uh, I feel really good about if if our starters can eat up that many innings and keep us in it, um, I would feel really good about those guys being able to close it out. Which is kind of weird to say, uh, given just a couple of weeks ago we were talking about what 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 did we say, Cal? We talked about it afterwards. There was only uh, we didn't have any returning pitcher. Non-starter, any any returning pitcher out of the pen that had under a ten ERA. Cool. So, um, you know, if we can get if we can get good performances by, hopefully Sam and Dom and hopefully Wit, man, um, and, and and get us five plus, man, that would be just absolutely huge. Yeah, and the series you feel like you're going to score some runs. They're scoring almost nine runs a game. Um, I mean, they kind of. Homer wake to death in their ballpark. I think that freshman hit like three against them. Um, so, and, and, you know, they got a pretty solidified lineup. They don't turn it over a whole lot. They played 36 games and they got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine guys that have started over 30 games. So they're not, uh, you know, you kind of got an idea who they're going to run out there. You know, they got some names that we've heard for a while. Alberto Asuna, Honeycutt, like I've already mentioned. Um, but uh, not a whole lot of easy outs in that lineup. And 
uh, a big series. I think at home, you know, I hope that our we have a, a really good crowd. I was looking at the weather. The only good thing about playing Thursday, Friday, Saturday is that the weather is a lot better. It starts to get a little chilly next week. Uh, looks like Thursday we got a high 86, Friday 82, Saturday 85. And I think we got, you know, 68 coming behind that. But, I mean, three days of mid-80 baseball in April against your rival at home. Uh, hey. What can you ask for? You might get some golf in this week too. Gosh, I, I wish I got to I got to travel again this week. But <laughs> Wesley, I'm hoping you get some in. I probably will. So, anything you guys want to add before we wrap it up? I need to go to bed. All so. right, hour and hour. We're at hour and seven. We we've, we've talked enough. Beat the hills. Beat the hills. All right. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Thank <laughs> you.